One unifying thing about short cut to mushrooms that appears a few times in the in the chapter, uh-huh. it's kind of a nothing chapter, and people have said, you know, a lot like you just said, uh, film ad- adaptations kind of skirt past it, don't really develop it because it doesn't really do a whole lot. There was a nod to it just, in, in Jackson. What was the nod in there Jackson was, like, in the movie? In Jackson's movie, there was a nod to it. They had like a uh, something like they they were being chased. That's why they started running when they ran into Mary and Pippin. Oh right, Remember? right. Okay, but they had vegetables. They didn't have mushrooms. They but, found mushrooms. But Farmer Maggot takes them to Buckleberry Ferry, right? Yeah, he does. In the, in well, the, in the, okay. Yeah. In the in the in the movie. No, not in the movie. In the movie, they just they just like take off. They're like in the movie, it like makes no sense. In okay. One way, because they're running it like Frodo and Sam are like walking, burr, 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 and then Mary and Pippin like run into them just like randomly. Okay. Because they were stealing vegetables from Farmer Maggot, right? In the movie. In the movie. Are they stealing but mushrooms, they though? Know, no, they weren't stealing mushrooms. They had carrots and roots and vegetables and all that shit. Oh, okay. And, now, um, I, I'm starting to remember. It's been a while. And then they fell down. They, they they got tackled, and they fell over a little thing, and they're like, it's a shortcut to mushrooms. And then, basically, it's just like a nod to like this whole it's chapter. It's a nod to the chapter itself. I guess, and I'm not saying that it's not a nothing chapter. It's entertaining, and I enjoyed reading it and stuff like that. But Farmer Maggot doesn't really play like like again. It's like Bombadil. Bombadil actually plays more of a of a of a pivotal role than 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 Maggot does. You know? Well, um, I mean, he he is kind of like a Bombadil or a Bjorn character. Like he, it's a it's a lesser character. Like you get in Bjorn in The Hobbit and in Bombadil, yeah. where they they run into a character who's. Who's slightly dangerous? I mean, uh, Farmer Maggot has, has had some dogs. run-ins with Frodo and has dogs, so he's got that element of danger, that natural world danger. That's like he could stick his dogs on you, and he protects his mushrooms. Um, but just like with um, Bombadil, and just like with Bjorn, once you get past that, like um, you know that that element of danger or that element of distrust. Then they all, th- all three of those characters become like a hospitable character and a nurturing yeah, character yeah. that wants someone to help you. But the, and they're kind of all three in touch with the earth in a very uh, real, real way, I guess. Yeah, and it's that old school like what's that? There's a word for it. Like is it Xenia or like the in heroic epics? Like you're supposed yeah, to. You would, you would know that. Um, I'm yeah, not, I'm it's not, like I can't, a I can't, hospita- I can't help you with that. It's hospitality. <laughs> Yes. It's like a tradition, like in like in the the, the Odyssey, where uh, Odysseus gets you know fed everywhere he goes. Like people like give him food and shelter and stuff. Well, speaking of which, I always thought that it was weird that oh, by the way, Mister F- like Frodo Baggins, here's a basket of mushrooms that the missus made for you. Like like why didn't like Pippin or Sam get it? You know what I'm saying? Like here, guys. Oh, because it's some mushrooms for all of you. It's the ironic gift because that's what uh, Frodo used to get in trouble for stealing. Yeah, no, I I understand that, you know, but it's like it's like it's like hey, here, Frodo, here's the best shit, <laughs> you know, and like you guys just kind of like oh, yeah. they're inconsequential. It's like Frodo always like gets the stuff, like you know. What I'm again, it, I guess it's like the hierarchy of what we're of what we're talking about. Of like, like so it's like where's my upper, mushrooms? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like no, I'm sure. Like, I'm, I'm sure Frodo would share. Well, he did, but he yeah. shared reluctantly, you know, because because he, <laughs> he loves mushrooms. In the next chat, yeah, yeah. You know why I love mushrooms? Because they're probably psychedelic, bro. Well, dude. Well, actually, there's that's not the only time in this chapter where. Um, like a substance, whether it's mushrooms or in another case, beer, no. is is a thing that will possibly get you in trouble or pull you off your quest or, you know what I mean? Because oh, yeah, yeah. like there is that s- brief section where they're talking about yeah, oh the gold the golden what, perch the golden perch and that's yeah, in Bywater, so, right yeah or is that uh, it's uh, it's by Marish I think down in the Marish okay yeah maybe okay the uh, golden where perch, either way yeah so and then. Uh, all right, said Pippin, I will follow you into every bog and ditch, but it's hard. I counted on passing the golden perch at stock before sundown. The best beer in the East Farthing, or used to be. It's been a long time since I tasted it. And then Frodo says, that settles it. Shortcuts make delays, but inns make longer ones. 
So he's like, that settles it. We're not going to go to the inn in stock and get drunk and totally forget about our quest here. We're going to like. I got a question for you. So, so how old is Pippin in this thing? He's too young to be drinking. That's what I'm saying. Was that your question? Yeah. Like yeah, it's been years. It's like 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 what do you mean it's been years? Like like I can see Sam. Sam I what was what? He was like Sam was pa- was past his uh, tweens. You yeah. know, couple couple years younger than Probably Frodo. His, I mean Frodo's in this, his fifties, like Frodo's fifty. We, we and, established that. Yeah. Sam is, I so want to say is, Sam is forty three. Is that does that But we're going by the American drinking age of twenty one and I know in England right. it's, or, but, it's younger. But, but Pippin did not come of age yet. He did not hit uh, 33, where it's like, oh, he's like a man now. Right. But I imagine in, in Hobbiton, you have like little toddler hobbits drinking beer. That's just how I imagine them. Pippin was 29. So basically, okay. he was like an 18-year-old Uh-oh. in Hobbit age. Uh-oh. Yeah. But maybe the legal drinking age was 18. So, <laughs> you know, I don't know. But uh, do you really gets- think the, the guys at the Golden Perch would be like, all right, Pip. Show us your show us your ID. Hey, Pip. That ain't you. Oh, I oh, know you're not twenty one. No, I don't want Sam. Guy. Okay, hold on. Sam age. Okay. Sam Gamg age. Uh, thirty nine years old. Mary was thirty seven. Fairmere is thirty six, and Pippin was twenty nine. Okay. So it's pretty young know. for a Hobbit, but I think he could probably safely drink. In this culture. Yeah, but that's like an eighteen-year-old kid. Yeah, well, no wonder he's such a dumb. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's what I said last time. He's like kicking. He's kicking palantirs into holes, or no, kicking rocks into holes and stirring up balrogs and kicking. But I always like. It would always to me like like thirty three for a hobbit. Always like okay, he's twenty one now. He can he can uh, he can. There's there's not he can drink and he vote. Can't, he can drink. He can vote. He can, he can gamble. Uh, yep. All that stuff. He's a full fledged hobbit. All right. But he could play like Lord back, of the Rings video poker. Maybe back in the forties and the fifties, like the legal drinking age was like uh like what is the legal drinking age in like uh uh, uh England? It's like twelve, right? <laughs> <laughs> like if it's Guinness. That's what it seems like. I think it is younger than in, in the States. I don't know. If only Did they ever kind of lower it to eighteen? It's still twenty one, yeah. right? No, I mean not here, but yeah, but there's places like there were places for years at the legal. Oh, in Europe, yeah, you see, no, in, you, in 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 America, there's states where like you right. know the legal drinking age is eighteen. Um, oh, in states, I, oh, certain states, in, in the, yeah, in certain oh, okay. states. Okay, well, makes sense. Uh, so Pippin then, in fact, could go to the uh, Golden Perch, but like it's been years since he's been there, so like yeah, he probably snuck in. Oh right, so he snuck in as a youngster. But yeah, that's, that saying. mimics and mirrors the fact that Frodo himself snuck into was Farmer it, Maggot's. Was a um, scallion. Yeah, so he's a delinquent. That shows a side of Frodo that we haven't really seen much of, but he was a delinquent, delinquent and of course people... And, he got, and Maggot beat him. Yeah, sicked his dogs on him. I, know, um, I think he like just thrashed him like the last time he caught him. And, and of course... Um, I don't think that Tolkien ever envisioned or intended these mushrooms to be hallucinogenic mushrooms in any way. But because Lord of the Rings has been so kind of adopted by the counterculture in the 1960s, ever since then, the idea that mushrooms were somehow psychedelic or that pipe well, weed, you know, you know, yeah, pipe yeah, pipe weed was, was a hallucinogenic um, Can I tell you, like, one of my biggest pet peeves about uh, uh, The Fellowship of the Ring was? The, the movie? The Jackson movie? The movie. The movie. The movie, yes. Yeah, yeah. Where Frodo and Gandalf are sitting there smoking pipe weed, and the implication was that this isn't tobacco. Oh, you know right, right. Where they're, like, all, like, you know, it's like. I, I did get this scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, too. It's like. Look at oh, that. I know. It's like. Yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> that is like so lowest common denominator. You know what I'm talking well, about? Well, the Hobbit, the Hobbit trilogy itself was, was pretty dumb. lowest I mean, common denominator. Like you could probably cut out like half. Like honestly, you could probably do a movie and a half. Like you know, yeah. like a four hour movie and 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 cover everything and make it pretty cool. Right. But they yeah they put so many little things. I mean they they really played up the Radagast character and he wasn't much. He's a little bit of um, a comic relief. 
Can I tell you one time, like, like I was talking to um, a guy at work, and like, and like I had to call him on his BS because we were talking about The Hobbit, right? Mm-hmm. And he was like, I don't know. I am so disappointed on how they handled Radagast because he was my favorite character from the books. So I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? <laughs> what? How can he be your favorite character from the books? That, that's what I was saying. I was like, are you are you out of your mind? Like, you, like, why are you talking to me? Like, like I've I've read like like it's like like any. I told him like I told him it's like anything that you say from here on out, I. Do not even have you. no credibility. You have no credibility. <laughs> like, like what? What are you talking you about? You are like, dead what, to like, me. You, yeah, I'm like, dude. Like he, he, like he said three lines in 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 right. the the Fellowship of the Ring, and and like, man, like, right. Like, I mean, like, I liked him in theory because he was like the guy who was into animals, and you know, he hung out right, in, right, right. in Mirkwood. And he was, um, you know, he's a, a, like a wood, a woodsman or a nature uh, avatar of of the green man of the wood or something yeah, from, yeah, yeah. from mythology or something. Um, but as a character, yeah, he was not developed. He didn't play a pivotal role. Um, I think what made him cool for me was that he was brown. Like he had the brown the like robes mm-hmm. and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but the imagination, like the imagination, like like the, you didn't need much. Like there was like a few lines that that, that you know Radagast uh, is more you know paraphrase more, you know concerned with the affairs of animals and stuff like that. But right, and he's honest that like so like Saruman could not have um, got Gandalf to come there without. Radagast being an honest guy, you know mm-hmm, what I'm saying. Radagast mm-hmm. was good. Radagast was a good wizard, you know. Yeah, I mean, he maybe he fell off the path a little bit for uh, you know because he, uh, you know, didn't you know ultimately, but he did ultimately. Fight he didn't Sar- succumb like Saruman did. Yeah, he did not. And the blue, the blue wizards are kind of like you know, yeah. who knows. But I just see him as another probably Maiar spirit who is in touch with the world of nature, much like yeah. a. Uh, Tom Bombadil, right, um, right? But one who, like Bombadil, is so caught up in the natural world, or Bjorn, or or an ant, is so like they they almost like hesitate to get involved in the affairs of men, right? Or elves or hobbits because they're just like, oh, I just um mainly just uh, care about rabbits or right, right. Or, well, know. Bjorn though, Bjorn like much like or much squir- like... or squirrels. 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 Now, much like Bombadil, though, like, 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 like Bjorn actually, out of all of those, like, w- was like, okay, this guy, well, this, you know, this being is not of, it's not human. It's like, like, to me, it's always like a bear that learned mm-hmm. how to be human, not like a, you know. Um, yeah, in a way. Yeah. Kind of aloof, like, not yeah. completely human. But like very much like 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 the the most nature like of all of them because like right. Bombadil like you know he he was a, he was a vegetarian he was vegan you know right. he had bees he ate bees he ate milk he never killed animals and stuff like that Bjorn mm-hmm. and you know Bombadil I don't I I think they never you know mentioned what kind of you know he had bread and all that stuff so maybe he was vegan or whatever but right. you know he like p- picked out some uh, um, some. You know some jewelry for Goldberry, and you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll get to all, to all that later. I mean, there, there's there's yeah. chapters. Yeah. Of when he comes, I in. almost but, see like um, Maggot, and he has a, his wife, who are again that kind of bountiful, helpful, nurturing um, nature people, as a yeah, kind of I, a Tom Bombadil and Goldberry. Yeah, I, in nah, Hobbit form, and much less, much form, less maybe. magical. You know, much more. But they also had like their 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 hands. Well, like it, to me, it was it was like a farm, like a, a legit yeah. farm. Yeah. Like this is like the, the farm life. You know that right? Like, you know, we, yeah. we live off of the land. But yeah, I mean, know. I didn't mean to push that uh, similarity too far, but there is a, kind of similar in in a way. A little bit. I mean, just in the role they play in in the in the yeah. plot. So yeah, yeah, but but Bombadil, but 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 again, again to jump ahead a little bit, Bombadil does play a a, a huge role when they gave gave uh, the hobbits their swords because ultimately, <laughs> like only that sword could have pierced the uh, witch king's uh, sinew <laughs> and uh, 
<laughs> allowed uh, right. uh, 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 Aowen to cut his head off. Very good. So Very good. There yeah. you go. Well, there, it's all connected. We are way ahead. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yes. But, but you know what ahead. I'd like to visit, though? It's like the whole idea... That, that that is like a pet peeve of mine, or not a pet peeve, whatever. It, it annoys it, it, it annoys me greatly, like when when because Tolkien, like again, I don't know if you know whatever, but he enjoyed his pipe, obviously, right? He enjoyed his you know, pipe. He enjoyed his pipe, and he brought in like he brought in like I I feel that the stuff that Tolkien loved, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like you know, like 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 the, like you beer, know, the, food, the, the pipe, beer, simple, simple pleasures, food. yeah, like, simple yeah. pleasures. Yeah, like very, you know, that like, it had to be taken up by by hippies and and kind of made more like. I, I don't know if it's hippies, but but the whole like, idea that 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 there's like 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 I don't, and it's not like a perversion of of like you know the pipe weed or the mushroom. Yeah, I didn't mean that like that like that they corrupted it necessarily because I mean I but, think the spirit was in the right place to a certain extent. I mean, like the idea of. I don't know. That's actually a really interesting thing that I, I want to touch on. I, I, go ahead, finish your thought, and I want. No, to no, no, no. Basically, like, no. Basically, I'm just saying. Like, I, I just, it's like I like the, I, like the purity of, of you know, and again, like the purity of the story. You know what I'm saying? Like the friendship and all that stuff, and and and, you know, it mm-hmm. doesn't need to be like like it it. Whether pipe weed or whether mushrooms or whatever are like you know mm-hmm. like a a, um, a metaphor for psychedelics, it's like it it serves it doesn't serve the story one iota. No, to like even like like to even have that. It, it does though when it's just like the simple pleasures of you know like oh like, right. You know. Um, I think it is quite interesting. I have a video a clip that I want to play that might uh, okay. shed th- some light on this quandary we find ourselves in and the i see the quandary as this like there are elements of let's call let's call it 60s counterculture hippiedom in lord of the rings in the reverence of nature the um the kind of the bucolia dropping out of society i mean dropping out of normal industrial society like yeah yeah yeah. the industrialization tolkien was a critic of industrialism the, the hippies that wanted to get back into nature were critical of industrialism. Um, so there there are parallels. However, yet, Tolkien was a very conservative Catholic, uh, and he was not... I, I don't think he... He might have liked the hippie counterculture in the sense that they were buying his books they, yeah, like, <laughs> and oh, making him rich. Yeah, but but uh, in terms of like an ideological... Christopher, you see, you see that bleeding <laughs> swimming pool in the back? <laughs> You can thank the hippies. <laughs> they bought that pool for you. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. I like that. I'm going to have to like, that was so good. I'm going to have to like um, Photoshop Christopher Tolkien <laughs> sitting in a swimming pool. <laughs> just, for, just for the audience. <laughs> Trying to find like a, a picture of Christopher Tolkien, like when he's like 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 a young Christopher Tolkien, you know, right, and then right. just put a young Christopher Tolkien in, in like a in like a, a Kim Kardashian swimming pool or something like that. Something right, like right, right. With like uh, with floaties on. Yeah. It's his excessive consumption of mushrooms. They've addled his brain and yellowed his teeth. It's his excessive consumption of mushrooms. So this is Saruman talking about Radagast and saying his excessive consumption of mushrooms has addled his brain. Right. So so these mushrooms aren't just mushrooms. They addle your brain. Right. So again, this is Jackson getting a little bit too hippy-dippy, hippy-core with his uh, adaptation. I think, honestly, I think that, that... Again, it's kind of like, oh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna lean into this whole like mm-hmm. you know, we're gonna like it was done. It was like a, it was a, it's not a funny part, but it was like an attempt at humor, an attempt to like paint Radagast in like some kind of like yeah. Like, I didn't mind like, it so much. I I'm not so um, like what precious or protective about, especially a character like Radagast, but just Tolkien not, in general. I, yeah. yeah, but I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not precious about Radagast. I I, I think that it's lazy writing. A little to bit. Like 
you know, where it's like it's like low it's like low hanging fruit, low common denominator stuff. And again, yeah, that's just me. I think I'm probably I, you know. Well, I, I, okay. And and like I said, I don't have a problem with drug references when 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 a movie is written around right. drug references or whatever, right? Right. But the, the 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 idea that this stuff creeps into the, into the Lord of the yeah. Rings, it's like, yeah. come on, guys, just you know what, just let it be a, a fairy story like it was, you know. But yeah, that's me. Right. But the thing is, is I think Jackson, I mean, to his credit, I think he did a really great job with a lot of the stuff, the first, uh, the fellowship, yeah, especially. Yeah. So, you know, I don't, Hobbit I don't dislike so the guy, but the, the Hobbit, enough. not so much, but he, especially in the Hobbit and, you know, later on, he was one to not, he, he wouldn't worry so much about canon if he could get a, a good joke or play a little bit like what he thought would win the audience over with a with a a moment of levity or something that would make the audience be like ha 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 look at that so and i the idea that like radagast would be you know taking some hallucinogenic mushrooms might make a few of the teenagers in the audience or a few of the young at heart or the the old aging hippies would be like Dude, yeah, Dude. that's right. That's my man. He's like, hey, man, the Jackson is like far out, man. Like, <laughs> far out. You know, yeah. He like, man, he like, he must have been there in the in in at, at Woodstock, man, when we changed yeah, the world, bro. Hate, hate Ashbury, bro. Yeah, man. When we were down at Woodstock, man, we made the whole world <laughs> pay attention, man. Sorry. So yeah. <laughs> do I do I sound like I yeah. don't like? But I found I, this little this little clip. Just yeah. check this out. Um, I think the important um, thing uh, when one reads Tolkien's works um, is not to let um, this pretty fairy tale um, lead one into um, um, accepting the basically reactionary doctrine that lies underneath it all. I, I mean, conservatism is quite all right when it's based on something, but his sort of conservatism, uh, that is the West, Numenor, the dwarves, elves, etc., uh, is, is based on absolutely nothing at all. I mean, you can't escape into the world because in, into the Middle Earth, because he's very cleverly incorporated um, the features of our world that he most dislikes in it. I mean, if, you, if you're looking in Tolkien for a sort of pastoral paradise, you won't find it, because all the time there's this menace of Sauron lurking in the East, represented as ugly, dark, black, toiling, uh, living, in, living in holes in the mountains. Well, these people are very, um, are obviously the proletarian masses, trying to, trying to achieve a revolution um, in, in, a, in a basically feudal society. So he was saying that Tolkien needs to depict Sauron with a little bit more sympathy, like made him more of a sympathetic character because he was this toiling, the black masses of orcs toiling away, trying, working for a better life, trying to go for the uh, proletarian revolution. What what the? (laughs) I knew that would I knew that would piss you off. (laughs) <laughs> this I mean, kid, it's this like, kid come saying, on. Like, the, yeah, like, this kid like, saying this he, he sounded a little bit scripted at first like he was nervously kind of reading lines yeah, at first off his, but but i mean come on you know it's like you're like like again it's look at a piece of work for what it is you know what i'm talking about like like the <laughs> one thing about me that i will tell it like that i will freely admit that when when people write metaphor or you know like like, oh, look at this movie. What does this mean? You know, or like, you know, what they really meant was that I, that go, all that shit goes over my head. You know what I'm saying? It's either a good story or it's not. Right, I don't right. care what, what, um, you know, what, what, uh, you know, what, um, uh, what the proletariat is doing and, and fighting the bourgeoisie or whatever the mm-hmm. frick this guy was like t- talking about, you know? The thing I mean, is, is, yeah, I, I, I feel bad picking on that, but like. Why? Guys a Ponzi Ponzi. No, no. He, he, well, I don't feel bad in that way. I, I feel bad in the sense that he is such a stereotype of a college student and the kind of things a college student would say. And rather than look at the merits of, of a story and the elements of the story, they immediately like extract, you know, extract snippets that they can then weave into an, a political narrative. Like the idea of the West being... Uh, manifested in Numenor or represented by Numenor, uh, that it was too divorced from like the, the material realities that you find in like a Marxist assessment of how 
political economies work and how society works. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, like Tolkien didn't bring any of that into the equation when he wrote his books. That's the guy's complaint. Right. Yeah. Well, you know what? Then, 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 you know, read, uh, uh read something else. Read, read the some, communist read, manifesto. Re- <laughs> like, uh, um, uh, 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 D.H. Uh, D- D- Lawrence. D.H. Lawrence. Yes. yes, yes. What like about, that. uh, he's wrote, uh, to, to read some D.H. Lawrence if you want to hear uh, about it. Uh, Bukowski. Does that, yeah, Bukowski. That? Bukowski. Bukowski. Sure. Bukowski. Like, man, I, I run into this all the time. It, it, it's like if, if you're not complaining about something, right? Mm-hmm. Then you are not saying anything that's worth saying, you know. Like, like you can uh, sit. Right. I don't know if that makes sense. I mean, look. I, I mean, it, you can critique, complain, you know, but ultimately, it's like offer up a solution. Like, what? Okay, like, okay, uh, uh, Brian Jones Jr. Kid, kid, guy looks like Brian Jones from. Oh uh, uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. He looked like Stumpy Joe. He looked like Stumpy Joe. Drama. <laughs> this maybe it's because it was filmed right around the same time period. It just looks like a Monty Python episode. And wait till you see this guy. <laughs> I was gonna say he looks like Eric. Vic, looks, don't read the text. <laughs> no, he looks like Eric Idle. Check this out. Check this out. Right. I mean, at first I was like, I had to do a double take. I'm like, is this a Monty Python episode? No, I don't at all like Tolkien or what he stands for. It seems to me that his work implies an escape from <laughs> political. Holy and social reality. He looks like Eric Idle and John Lennon. If yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> reality. No, uh, this seems it seems to me is reprehensible. Uh, it's an implication of triviality. It's an implication of regression. A refusal to uh, face up to our political and social problems, our religious problems of today, and. It, the cult of the Hobbit, uh, the cult of Tolkien in America particularly, seems to be responding to this uh, sort of failure in engagement with our political and social situation. The trouble is, oh my God, <laughs> if there's not going to be any progress, <laughs> it's largely how I predicted, except the silly part you won. <laughs> Dude, wasn't that guy straight from Monty Python? Dude, like he's a freaking caricature. He's like, oh, my name's Wombat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to read your poet. Oh right, <laughs> right. What's wrong with Tolkien? You see, like it's Reginald yeah. Pither. Oh yes. I always wanted to be an a, a lion tamer. <laughs> <laughs> right, dude, that is like totally uh, Michael Palin, dude. Situation. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, so the point he was making is almost <laughs> it was almost the opposite of what these kids were talking about because, like, right, right. the younger kids were talking about like he's too conservative, and this this uh, more uh, conservative looking bloke kind of was complaining that it was like a too too escapist or something. But in a sense, they were both saying it was escapist. Yeah. Uh, like the, it's not it's not dealing with the the working classes and the needs of the masses oh there you go bring class into it again <laughs> so what the conclusion we came up to today is that a, is that uh english that people are silly to, english people are silly uh silly shortcut to mushrooms uh should have been like three pages <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. They could have done a shortcut to the next chapter. Yeah, a shortcut to the next chapter where they actually say something. And, but, then, and, um, and beer beer slows you down, like uh, literally. Beer slows you down. And mushrooms yeah. are are not psychedelic, but if you're a, if you're a rap scuttle or a rap, right. if you're you a rap scallion you know like Frodo. You know who I blame uh, uh, the whole uh, mushroom thing for is Lewis Carroll. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's another. Yeah. And Grace Slick, because she she wrote that song about that rabbit that was uh, uh, chasing caterpillars. And how one pill makes you small. Yeah, and then like, hey, tell me mushroom eating. Uh, you talk about mushrooms, whatever. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Drugs. So thank you, Jefferson Airplane, for ruining Tolkien for me. 